So last class we found that Albert Einstein drew that link between mass and energy, and what we call that mass energy equivalence, E equals mc squared. Um, what you're going to see is mass often stated in the energy equivalence way. So in kind of a, a bit of an odd way for us, uh, we're going to see mass a lot of times in mega electron volts per c squared. Uh, and that's kind of just rearranging that formula. Um, if I wanted to get, for instance, the mass by itself, right, I would divide it out by c squared, divide it out by c squared. I'd find that energy is equal to, or sorry, uh, mass is equal to energy over c squared. And um, instead of being in joules, we'll just put it in me uh, mega electron volts for the energy. Uh, what we find is you're not actually dividing that value by the 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second for the speed of light squared. Uh, we're just kind of leaving it like that. So, so the main uh, way that we have to work with these ones um, is we have to go from mega electron volts through to joules, through to kilograms if we want to do a conversion uh, in that way. If we want to go the other way, so say we want to go from kilograms to mega electron volts per C squared, we have to just kind of go the other way. So um, it's one or the other, but the, the key for these ones is to kind of remember that if we can convert that energy value to joules, um, that's going to help us out tremendously. So for our first one, we have to calculate the mass of an electron in mega electron volts. So I have my E equals mc squared. Um, and I know the mass of an electron from uh, the formula sheet, right? I know it's 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And I find that energy to be about 8.2 times 10 to the negative 14 joules. Um, what I want to do is I want to convert this value to mega electron volts, right? And I remember, uh, and it's on my sheet, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So if I had two electron volts, I would multiply that. I would Three electron volts, I would multiply that 1.6 by three. But I'm going from joules to electron volts. So uh, this time I'm going to divide that out, right? So I'm going to divide out... 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per electron volt. That cancels out my joules, and I find I get oops, Uh, what is that? 512,437.5 electron volts. I want to convert that to mega electron volts. Right? I've got to move that decimal point, uh, and I'm basically dividing this out now by what a mega is, 10 to the power of 6. That'll give me 0.512 mega electron volts. Now, uh, I'm looking for it in... Um, Kind of in mass. So if I think about that formula again, I've got the energy right now, but I want it in um, mass by itself, so I divide that by c squared. Uh, but if I'm leaving my answer in this form that it wants, I'm not dividing it uh, and actually doing the calculation on my calculator. Uh, I'm just leaving it as I want to get c squared by itself. I want to get, or sorry, I want to get the mass by itself, so I divide by c squared. So I divide by c squared, and that's my answer. So it's a bit different than we've done uh, a kind of in the past here. Um, but just think in terms of the energy. That's the biggest portion for this. The c squared is to get the mass by itself for the correct units. Um, but we're not actually, for this one, we're not uh, dividing that out by 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters uh, per second squared. So let's try another one. Uh, this time we've got a subatomic particle known as a neutrino having a mass of around 2.2 electron volts per c squared. 
convert this mass to kilograms. So remember what I said earlier, if we're going from electron volts uh, to kilograms, we need to go from electron volts to joules to kilograms. So I have to convert this mass that I have right now. So my mass is 2.2 .2 electron volts per C squared uh, into um, my energy here. So I can multiply both sides by C squared. And basically I get that 2.2 uh, .2 is my energy, right? So if I have this, I have that 2.2 .2 electron volts as my energy. That's why we're not, uh, when, it, when it's in the form electron volts per C squared or mega electron volts per C squared, we're, we're just using the C squared basically as a unit. Um, so now we're going to multiply, bring this up just a bit. Uh, we're just going to convert that electron volts into joules. So to convert that, I go 2.2 .2 electron volts multiplied by 1.6. Right, my electron volts cancels out. And I find, what does that give me? 3.52 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So that's my energy. Um, now if I'm just trying to get it in uh, kilograms, this is where I can put it back into the formula. Oops, maybe I can put it back in the formula. I'm having a lot of problems with the smart board stuff today. Okay, uh, and I can divide out by that C squared. Now, since I don't want, um, my units to be joules per uh, this c squared, I can actually work this out. I can actually calculate it out this time. So what I mean by that is I'll put that energy. And I'll divide that out by 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second squared. And I get an answer of 3.9 times 10 to the negative 36 kilograms. So why in this last one did I actually divide it out by 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second? Uh, and in the first one, I just left it as C squared. Well, it's what, my, what I want to give my answer in. So in this one, I want to give it in kilograms. So in order for me to give this in kilograms, I actually have to account for what the values are, the numerical values. In this one, uh, or sorry, in the top one, up here, uh, this one. Um, we want our units in mega electron volts per C squared. So if I'm going to do that, uh, I'm going to just leave it as C squared. 